Hi folks, Chris Voss here from the ChrisVossShow.com, the ChrisVossShow.com. Kind of blog post, of course, we want to share with you. We'll review all the latest in social media and technology. This is going to be a phone comparisons review. And of course, we have all the major phone companies that send us phones to review. Be sure to tune into the ChrisVossShow.com channel and our YouTube channel so you can take and see all the latest and greatest phones as they come out. These are two of the latest awesome phones that are on the marketplace. One is the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 from AT&T.com, that's AT&T.com, and also the Motorola Droid Razor Max HD, which is from Verizon Wireless, that's VerizonWireless.com. Thanks to both companies for providing the phones for us to review today and share with you. Let's get into some of the details of some of these two powerhouses of Android OS performance. The body on the uh, Note 2 is 5.95 in height, 3.17 in width, and 0.37 in thickness. On the Motorola Droid, we're looking at a 5.19 height, 2.67 in width, and 0.37 in thickness. On the weight for the Note 2, we're looking at uh, 6.46 ounces. And on the Droid Razor Max HD, we're looking at a uh, weight of 5.54 ounces. The display on the Note 2 is a Super AMOLED capacitive touchscreen, 16.7 million colors with 720 by 1280 pixels, 5.5 inches with a 267 PPI pixel density. It has, of course, Corning Gorilla Glass 2 on the front of it. Uh, for the uh, display on the on the Droid, we're looking at uh, OLED. Full color, resolution 720 by 1280 pixels, 4.7 inch diagonal, super AMOLED screen. Um, on the Galaxy Samsung, uh, with the memory, we're looking at a micro SD expandable up to 64 gigabytes. It comes with in either 16, 32, or 64 gigabyte storage with two gigabytes of RAM built into it. On the uh, Droid Razor Max, we're looking at uh, 32 gigabytes of internal storage, uh, and available to user is one gigabytes of RAM, and uh, I believe it does have expandable uh, memory on it. Let's take a look and see if it does. Yes, it has expandable micro SD memory slot where you can take and plug that baby in and expand the memory. Let's take a look at uh, the gears of what's inside of it. Um, on the uh, chipset for it. It runs on Android OS fee, uh, version 4.1.1, which is Jelly Bean. It's got an Exynos uh, 4412 quad uh, core processor, so it's quad core CPU uh, with 1.6 gigahertz Cortex A9 to it. Very, very powerful. We're seeing the launch of more and more of these quad core processor devices. The processor on the Droid Max HD is a 1.5 gigahertz dual core, comes with Android version 4.0 and is upgradable to 4.1. We'll check and see what we're running here on this particular device. On the Galaxy Note 2, uh, what we're looking at on the um, what we're looking at on the camera is a back camera of 8 megapixels and uh, of course 1080p 30 frames per second and the front camera 1.9 megapixels on the droid we're looking on the camera at 8 megapixels on the back and of course 1080p out the back and 1.3 megapixels on the front facing camera so uh, that gives us kind of the rundown between the two different devices and some of the stats on them and how they do their thing. Now, uh, let's take a look. We know that we've got Jelly Bean on this one. Let's take a look and see what we've got running on the Droid so that we have a good idea. Um, we get so many phones that we work from. We Sometimes it's good to check and make sure that nothing has been updated to it. Looks like we're running Android version 4.04 .04 on the Motorola. So let's take a look at the front of both devices. On the front we have your speaker, which is for your phone calls. We have some sensors. We have your front facing camera. We have a home button. We have a capacitive touch screen uh, that you can use for both menu and the back button. On the Motorola we have a, uh, looks like a sensor here. Uh, we have a small 
uh, speaker at the top. We have a front-facing camera there, and then we have a capacitive touchscreen for home, back button, and recent apps button. So you can see those there. Both have really good OSs and UIs to them that we both like. Um, you can see here the drop-down notification menus on both these devices. Here you can see the drop-down notification menus on both devices. Uh, the cool thing about the Samsung Galaxy is when you pull down the notification menu, you have access to these quick changes that you can take and do to the menus uh, and your settings, if you will, quick settings. Now, the Droid is not without something that's very quick, where normally on the Samsungs you have the infinite scroll, if you will, where you can go between your screens. On the Motorola Droid, if you flip to the left, uh, it actually gives you the quick menu, so you can easily adjust the quick menu if you so choose that way. It does not have the infinite scroll that comes with uh, the Samsung device. Uh, both are easy to add, of course, the widgets and everything that is the favorite. Uh, thing to do among most people that like their Androids where they like to be able to customize the widgets, customize the menus, add folders, all that sort of good stuff. Let's take a look at the back of both devices. The back of both devices are very good looking, especially the Droid. It has this kind of, uh, has this kind of bulletproof looking back, if you will, here. Um, that uh, looks really good. Uh, the back on the Galaxy Note looks like a shiny brushed aluminum and uh, it's pretty much a, a slight pass, plastic piece that's in the back. Uh, at the very top here on the Samsung Note 2 we have a camera eye, we have your flash lamp, and we have a very small speaker right here. It's much larger behind that hole. Um, one thing that's interesting too is they raised up the uh, bar on the speaker so that it kind of sits a little bit above and doesn't scratch the back quite so easily. You'll also note down here that we have a um, we have a pen that is inside of the Galaxy Note 2, a stylus if you will. We'll show you that here in a second. On the uh, HD uh, Max Droid, uh, we have the lamp and we also have a small microphone hole there. Uh, we have the camera eye itself, we have a speaker, we have the logo, and that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at uh, the stylus here for the Note 2. You can see it pulls out, it even has its own little uh, sort of mouse uh, menu sort of key, control key. Has the ability to of course draw and do stuff if you want to take and do that. It's really cool where you can, when you hold it close, you can actually see about where you're about to draw on the device. Uh, and of course you can control menus and uh, push button things, all that sort of good stuff on the device to get different things to activate. So it's very interesting that way. Um, and of course it, the nice thing is it keeps it with you. One cool thing about the settings that we really liked on the Galaxy Note 2 is you can actually set the settings up so that if you happen to walk away from the um, stylus leaving it behind potentially uh, within a few feet it will give you an alarm to say hey you're walking away from the stylus and uh, don't leave without it now on the back part we of course have the back pulls off with the Samsung you have a removable battery if you so choose you can see here the speaker is much larger uh, there's a place up here for your micro SD card and also for your SIM card now with the HD Droid, we don't have a removable back. We actually have a side tray that opens up for not only the SIM card but also for the uh, expandable micro SD card. So let's take a look at both devices around the side. You can see here that the uh, on Note 2 we've got a small power button there, and then on the top we have a small microphone hole here, and then an earphone jack. Along the left hand side we've got your uh, volume rocker button for up and down and then of course down on the bottom we have a small uh, microphone hole in the sync port and of course you can see the uh, stylus plug if you will there at the bottom. Uh, on the Motorola let's take a look at down the side of it. It's got a beautiful steel side and kind of these uh, kind of hard metal uh, sort of uh, geared if you will or cut um, uh, different buttons that give it kind of a personality so you've got your volume rocker button here and then you've got your power button here 
On the top, we've got a uh, earphone jack to plug in the earphone. On the left-hand side, this is the dual tray I mentioned. Uh, using a special device that comes with it, you plug it in, and this will pop out. You have a place here for your micro SD card and also for your SIM card here. Now, what's cool too is down the side here is we have the sync charger button, but we also have the HDMI output button. So if you have an HDMI output plug. Um, to go from micro to normal HDMI, you can do that and plug it in, away you go. On the bottom, nothing much to see here. We've got just a small screws to be able to get you put into place and rocking and rolling. It appears the microphone is probably housed behind this tiny little hole here you can see uh, that picks up the mic and sound from you when you're making a call. So very interesting in how they set that up and how it works. Um, both devices are very beautiful devices and rock solid speedy little bugger devices. Let's take a look at their uh, speed test that we did on them and you can get an idea as to how well each of these devices performed uh, given their uh, ability to do what they do and also given uh, the networks that they're on. Now we have the internet of course turned on both these devices currently but at the time that we pulled these speed tests we did not have that uh, done so please don't write me on uh, YouTube so here you can see the speeds for this one with AT&T this one with Verizon wireless.com both on a 4G uh, status network uh, they perform very well and of course your speeds are going to vary depending upon your locale and how much support for the particular uh, provider or carrier you have is in your area so as I page down, you can take and pause this at any time to see the individual scores. They're not really that important. The, the of course, the main scores are the are the most important. Great thing about most of these apps here is that you can take and uh, download them for free on the App Store and follow along at home with your phone to see how well your phone compares and benchmarks with these devices here, and you can figure out which one you might want to buy. Okay, so here we're testing on a Skype uh, localized Wi-Fi the uh, front-facing camera on the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. You can see it gets really good, uh, it projects really good video. As you can see here, I'm receiving it on my uh, on my iPad 3. The uh, reason we have it blocked down on the other side is to make sure that you, under you know which video is the one that we're testing out and broadcasting, of course, on the iPad 3 as a receiver. So you can see how well the Note's putting out. Okay, so here we're doing a Skype call. Uh, this is across our localized Wi-Fi. You can see here that it does a great job with the front-facing camera of being able to see me and broadcast me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so let's take a look at the Android camera that's on the Note 2. Uh, it's got a very powerful, awesome camera on it. Uh, it's great. It really rock and rolls. I think the only thing that rivals it is the iPhone 5. Um, and the 4S. Uh, so you can see here you've got several different menu items where you've got your front facing camera switch, you've got your uh, flash switch, and of course this would change to lamp if you're in video mode. Uh, you've got different uh, uh, shooting modes you can take and do. One of the cool things is the burst shot that comes with the device where you can shoot off a whole mess of shots and everything else. Um, You've got effects that you can take and preload onto the screen to be able to see what's going on. You can edit the shortcuts, of course, that are over here. Do burst shots, self-portrait, uh, different effects, exposure values. You've got total control. Different scene modes that you might have that you can take and do here. Portrait landscape, sports, indoor, sunset, dawn. They have quite a quite a bit with the Samsung's uh, timers, and the resolution, white balance, ISO, metering. Uh, all sorts of different stuff as you can see here that you can take and do. They probably have one of the most extensive uh, lists of different settings and tweaks you, you can take and do of any Android phone uh, that's out there. Um, and of course once you switch to video mode you've got much the same. You can set limits for MMS. Now the one thing that's really cool about this <laughs> about this one is it will do slow motion and fast motion which is really really cool. Um, basically it will film in fast motion or, or slow motion and what's nice is you don't have to have an app to take and slow it down like you would with uh, other devices. Uh, so that's really fun and interesting and of course you've got different effects you can take and put in here uh, along the way. So we'll show you some of this. Now the one great thing about the device is it shoots very well in night functions. It's got an excellent lamp and an excellent flash. This is a completely dark room. Uh, we've uh, the 
the flash was able to light up the uh, room and also be able to secure a in-focus shot. Um, here is another shot where it's completely dark, completely dark, I'm not even kidding you, and you can see how well it lit up this whole hallway and how well it shot down the corridor. Uh, it's got a great flash to it. Here's us using the lamp uh, and the video mode and uh, of course the flash is a lot more powerful as you can see in the colors so uh, there's that there but you can see it does shoot pretty far down the hallway um, so that's good uh, let's take a look at uh, some video here that we took and did now this is the fast motion video that's kind of funny to watch you can see the dogs moving really fast um, I believe this might be a slow motion video uh, where the dogs are going to be moving really slow and I'm slowly back away. There you go. You can see the <laughs> slow motion. It's pretty darn cool. I like it. It's pretty fun. Um, so we had fun doing that with uh, my dogs. Um, you can see here it takes really good pictures. These are outside in the daylight pictures. Um, and you can see uh, how well the blues, greens, everything comes out and pops really well. We've got the sun setting, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We're even going to Think come up here tight. You can see the lines in really good detail, even in close-up shots um, that come through. Uh, you can see the pictures, some of the pictures we had here. There's a sunset, so we're not going to get much of a good picture setting there because of the blast of the sun going down. Uh, but you can see here the colors come out just wonderful on the device. Now, this is pretty interesting. We got close up to some wood grain to see how well it picked up wood grain on a close-up. Many of these cameras, you need to have macro lenses, but they're getting better and better at shooting almost in a macro phase. Uh, and this is almost within, I think, an inch or half an inch of the wood. Uh, and it's shooting really well. So uh, you can see that here uh, with this device, or with this uh, uh, the Note 2. But it shot really good with the wood grain. We were really surprised at how well it did what it did. Anyway, I uh, love the camera. It rock and rolls. Uh, it's a great compliment to a great device. Okay, so let's take a look at the camera on the device. Um, it's got an impressive camera to it. Uh, it definitely is a great camera. I'm, I'm very impressed. Um, on the Motorola, uh, let's take a look. You've got, of course, zoom over here where you can zoom in and out. You can also set up to where you can use the volume button for zoom. Uh, in settings, you've got some interesting settings here. Uh, you've got your widescreen for 8 megapixel. You can also click this and it will go to 6 megapixels to match the screen. Kind of interesting. You can see here you can also use the volume key function as a zoom. You can z z geotag. Uh, you can pick your storage location and shutter tone uh, if you want a shutter tone to be able to take and do. Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, it actually defaulted to this 6 megapixel uh, setup. And of course, you can see it's the same for the 8 here. Uh, of course, these are most of the things you get with most Android products. You've got pre-made effects you can take and put into play. Uh, you've got scenes you can take and do. Um, the uh, modes you can take and do. One thing that was kind of irritating though is it kept suggesting HDR mode in some cases and I couldn't figure out a way to turn that suggestion off which is really irritating. It's like a box that pops up here. Um, it's probably the one thing I've kind of gone, what is that? Uh, the exposure here, of course, you can adjust, and of course, you have your lamp uh, exposure, depend upon whether you're in shutter mode, uh, camera mode, or video mode, as in this case, we are in video mode, so let's go ahead and kill that light. Uh, you can see here, we have several different functions, of course, your normal video, video MMS, slow motion. That's kind of interesting. A lot of phones now are coming with the features of slow or fast motion already built into where you don't need an app, so you've got slow motion mode, which is pretty cool there. Um, you can see here HD video resolution you can adjust. Of course, you got zoom once again with the thing. And on the video resolution, you can choose between a number of definitions depending upon what you want to fit your mode. Uh, you also have effects, of course, and you also have uh, audio scenes that you can take and do. I guess set up stereo uh, wind reduction or concert. Uh, I guess wind reduction would be good, and the concert too, for that matter. And then, of course, the thing with the droid is you can slide that to the side. You've got that at your beck and call if you ever need it. Uh, of course, you have your ability to switch between your front and back facing cameras. You've got your shutter buttons here, your active record button. You can, of course, switch between uh, your camera and your video there. 
let's take a look. Now, <clears throat> the one part that we weren't excited about with the camera was uh, it has a hard time taking really good pictures and focusing in the flash lamp complete darkness situation. So we took this in complete darkness. If you can't tell, it's actually a closet. Um, Okay, so here what you're looking at is the CF Bench Pro version 1.2. This is a great benchmarking app that gives us a really good idea of some of the different things that it can take and do. You can see down here some of the stuff, native MIPS, Java MIPS, uh, all the sort of stuff that it's going to take and compare. You can pause the video anytime if you want. But you can see here the native score, the Java score, and the uh, overall comparison score. Uh, the score for the Note 2 came in at 15,124 overall, 9541 for the Droid. You can see the device for the Note 2 scored above the Galaxy S3 and the uh, HTC One X. The uh, Galaxy S3 uh, scored above the droid and so did the 1x so the droid ended up kind of in the middle where the note 2 ended up at the top okay so here we can see how both devices fared out this is uh, our benchmark and uh, scoring uh, app uh, this shows that the uh, galaxy note came in 11,502 at the top of the list and second on the list came out at 10,367 according to their uh, benchmarking app uh, number two on the list right below the HEC 1S which is very fast okay so here we can see the uh, this is the quadrant standard test on both these devices and the Note 2 came in at 58.99 which is a pretty huge score 58.99 above the 1X and the ASUS transformer and as you can see here the uh, Droid came in at 47.69 with the quadrant standard score uh, above the HTC One X and the ASUS Transformer also. Okay so here we can see the pass mark performance test scoring and uh, you can see how each device scored on the Note 2 that came in at 2548 in the system, 2162 on the system for the Droid uh, paging down here and of course you could pause anytime if you like. The CPU test came in at 11,556 most likely because of that fast dual core or uh, quad core processor on the uh, Droid 5437 on the disk test 5,445 and on the disk tests on the Droid 2916 on the memory tests uh, 1358 on the uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 2 2229 on the Droid uh, 2D graphics tests are 3109 against 2162 and the 3D graphics test 874 on the pass mark uh, for the Note 2 against 747. All right, so here we can see the Velamo scores between the two devices. The uh, Velamo scores, of course, pull out of HTML5, JavaScript, all that good stuff. You can see we came in with a score of 1859 and 621 in metal against 1712 and 614 on the Droid. Okay, so this here is the billion counter test. This uh, determines how quickly the device can count to a billion using its services. Uh, the Note 2 did it in 25.349 seconds. The Motorola did it in 22.46 seconds. Okay, so here you can see the GL Benchmark 2.5.1. Uh, results on this. Um, it came in with the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. I'm not sure if this is accurate because there's a little asterisk there. Last time we saw an asterisk, it wasn't reading right. Um, it the, uh, came in at 19.59 frames at 17 frames a second, while the Droid came in at 25.05 frames at 22 frames per second. On uh, the off screen, came in at 19.68, 17 frames per second for the Note 2, and on the Droid, 15.14 frames at 13 frames per second. Okay, so here you can see we're using the RL Benchmark SQ Lite Performance Test. Uh, this uh, tests different inserts, indexes, drop tables, things of that nature. Uh, the score for the Note 2 is 16.038 and for the Droid, 26.088. Okay, so here we can see this is the AND E Bench app that's running, uh, and it measures native and Java threads, how fast each device can process. You can see here the power of the quad cores, 10,809 on the native threads and 4727 on the Droid for native threads. Java threads, 364 against 207 uh, for the Droid. 
Okay, so here you can see using the KFS benchmarking uh, app, this gives us a pretty good idea. This is uh, measures OpenGL 2.0 performance. Uh, you can see here we came in at frames per second at 36.476 and 25.873 uh, frames per second on the on the Droid. Okay, so now we can see the uh, Sunscript uh, 0 0.9.1 JavaScript benchmark results on both these devices and of course we've got the Wi-Fi turned off on this case and of course the lower number here is the better number to take and have for speed uh, the Note 2 came in a thousand point or thousand two point one milliseconds against the uh, Motorola Droid 1783 point one milliseconds okay so here we can see the uh, results of the browser mark rightware.com performance test the score on the Note 2 came in at 22.33, since it's in the top 87% of all phone browsers. The score for the Droid came in at 2037 and was in the top superior to 75% of all phone browsers. Okay, so when it comes down to both devices, they both perform extremely well and are awesome phones, uh, given that there are some of the latest work to come out of the Android OS system. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy uh, Note 2 is definitely a powerhouse with its quad core and large screen. Uh, the Motorola holds its own, we've given it size and shape, and uh, has, of course, a different UI, being the Motorola UI. It's really up to you which one works best for you, and, of course, the Droid is usually only available on the Verizon Wireless service, as opposed to the Samsung you can get through also Verizon Wireless if you so choose. So, uh, you can go to at and say hello to our friends there, and uh, pick yourself up a Samsung Galaxy Note 2, or you can go to our friends at Verizon Wireless that's verizonwireless.com pick yourself up a droid razor max hd both phones are freaking awesome and i've enjoyed working with both of them and uh, i'll let you decide which one is better and will work for you as all the phone carriers send us phones uh, be sure to subscribe to the chris foster channel and our youtube channel so you can get all the latest and greatest as they come out chris foss tested chris foss approved make sure you tell them chris foss sent you thanks for coming by and be sure to check back multiple times a day